Today I'm going to show you how to use a book for college research purposes. What we'll be covering today are the parts of a book, scholarly and popular books, and how to use a book for research. So let's say you found two books in the library. Which one do you use and how do you use it? First we're going to look at Super Gods. This is the front cover, and on the back cover often it will give you a summary of the book. That will help you to figure out whether the book will work for you. If we open up the book, we're going to come across the title page. Okay, and on this title page you're going to find the title, the author, the publishing company, and the date of publication. Those are all things that you need in order to cite a book. Now the, play, the copyright date may also be on the copyright page, which is uh, the next page over from the cover page or the title page. Okay, and if I keep turning, um, I'm going to come to the table of contents. Okay, and this tells you exactly what's covered in the book. This is really important because if I'm doing a paper on the golden age of superheroes and comics, then I can see right here that um, this book covers the golden age in part one. It starts on page one and ends um, with the chapter that starts on page 47. That's really important information if I'm trying to figure out what part of the book I actually need to read. Um, one secret to using books in library research is that you don't actually use the whole book most of the time. Usually you're going to read a small section of the book and not read all 400 pages or 300 pages. So don't be intimidated from or let that stop you from using books because um, chances are you're not really actually going to have to read very much. Okay, so now it goes into the content of the book. And you can read the parts that you need. If I flip to the back, we're going to have the index. And this, the index covers all the important ideas or concepts of the book, and it tells you exactly which page that it covers that. So that can be really helpful if you only need a very small thing, like let's say you wanted to talk about Martian Manhunter. I can look here and find Martian Manhunter, and it will tell me exactly where to go to read about Martian Manhunter. Some books will have a dust jacket, and um, that basically is the covering on the book. And on, in, on the back part of the dust jacket, you might find an author bio. And then usually on the front part, you'll find the summary or the marketing copy for the book that tells you why you might want to read the book. Now these two books are about the same topic. They're both about superheroes and how... Um, uh, you know, different academic ways of looking at superheroes. However, they're very different. This particular book is written by a uh, very famous comic book writer. It is published by a popular press. Um, it's his thoughts on uh, superheroes and comic books. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad book to use, but it's very different from this book. This book is published by a university press. You can tell that because of the publisher here. And then whenever you open the book and you look back on that title page, you'll see right here that this says it's published by the Royal Society of Chemistry as well. And if you go on the copyright page, it will also tell you that information as well. Um, and that's really important because scholarly books are published differently than regular books books that you might see in Barnes and Nobles. One other thing you'll notice about this book, the people listed on the title page are editors, not authors. This is really common in scholarly books. Um, this is actually a good thing because if you go to the table of contents, you'll see each chapter is written by a different person. So this first chapter is written by Mark Lorch. The second chapter is written by Louise Gentle. Okay, and whenever you cite, you're going to actually cite the title and author of the chapter as well as the title and author of the book. Um, and like I said, often you're only going to use a small section of the book. A lot of times scholarly books are going to cover things uh, in very minute, specific detail. So for example, um, 
here we have a chapter called is it ceramic is it graphene no it's vibranium and it's about um, supermaterials uh, which is very very specific you're probably not going to find a whole book about supermaterials um, in a library potentially but probably not so this is very very specific um, and scholarly books are more apt to have things like that where you might be writing a paper just like um, popular books they're going to have the same layout they're still going to have a table of contents what they may have that a popular book doesn't have is a reference section these are all the resources that the person who wrote this chapter consulted when they were writing it so you can actually look up these resources and use them in your own paper and also make sure that the person did their research properly but probably the most important thing to consider about scholarly books is that scholarly books are always written by researchers or scholars or professors in that particular field so that means you get a high level of expertise and authority that you're not going to necessarily get from a popular book popular books can be written by scholars and researchers but their intended audience is different the intended audience for a scholarly book are college students like you and other researchers where a popular book is written for a general audience so there's not as much care taken for accuracy and for making sure that they are getting it right um, and making sure that the information is accurate so that's a very important thing to consider when choosing your books now you might say that's a lot of trouble why do I want to use a book um, well you probably would want to use a book for your research project because books are going to give you different kinds of um, information that you're going to not going to find in magazines uh, or journals journals tend to be very specific they also tend to be very difficult to read and understand um, books are much easier to understand in general um, they're much more good at giving you things like background information um, a lot of times if you're presenting an argument you have to present information about your topic um, like if you were say doing the um, topic of climate change you might have to give um, information about the history of climate change um, what's been done already that sort of thing books are really great for that sort of thing um, books are also really great if you want to know how to do something um, and they also help you to avoid using sites websites that may or may not be accurate um, books tend to have a little bit of a higher accuracy since they do have to be looked over before they're published but not always um, just like any resource you'd want to evaluate it before you use it if you need further help with this topic please contact your local librarian